Comment by Salas Chukwu Follow on Twitter Every major footballing nation remains enthralled to a past glory in some way, either banking on it, or aspiring to it. For the larger nations, it tends to be a bit of both but for the smaller, like Nigeria, it is very much the latter. It explains, to some degree, why the success of 1994 has come to be looked upon as a manual of sorts, a strict how-to on building a successful Nigerian national side. By that example, it begins with the manager, Clemens Westerhoff, charismatic as he was, needed five years to build Nigeria its finest ever side for a maiden World Cup, and so it is against that time frame that every prospective Nigerian helmsman has been measured, less than that, and you're ahead of schedule, and in credit. Therefore, in taking charge only two years ago and navigating a tricky qualifying group, Skernod Roar was basically playing with house money in Russia. Also, and as is crucial in continuing in the Western Hof tradition, it has bought him time to continue rebuilding the national side. To his credit, he did in fact do just this in freshening up the age profile of the Super Eagles, unlike a number of his predecessors who only paid lip service to the idea. Now, in the aftermath of the World Cup, it is widely expected that the next phase of Roar's rebuild will kick in, with a view to making a deep run, at the very least, in next year's Africa Cup of Nations, and then a proper tilt at the 2021 edition. Nigeria players at WHO should be dropped of the 23 that made up the squad to Russia, 5 or 30 years and older. Those dreaded numbers usually sound the horn for the twilight of a player's career. However, experience is crucial within the setup, and so it would not do to consign them all to the scrap heap on that account right away. Mikel John Obi and Leon Balogun rallied impressively at the Mundial to deliver strong performances, and both ought to be retained for their leadership. Balogun's steadying hand remains crucial for the continued growth of William Trusitong, who is not quite ready to take the reins himself. For Mikel, AFCON 2019 would afford him the well-earned chance to end his 13-year association with the national team on a high. Elderson Achigile and Daniel Akpayi, at 30 and 32 respectively, have almost certainly outlived their usefulness in the national team. Former's experience counted for none, while the latter had played himself out of contention with a number of errors, and can no longer be relied upon. Ogan Yeonazi, once a linchpin within the team, is another who arguably should be dropped. In truth, his form has been a worry for quite a while, the feeling persists that he has not been the same since breaking his foot in the 2014 World Cup. His feckless showing in the pre-World Cup friendly against England, alongside Joel Obi, was the last straw for a usually loyal roar. Another who is surely done with the national team is Zodion Ayalo. His form heading to Russia was not great but he could somewhat justifiably point to a lack of quality service anyway. That all changed in St. Petersburg, when he missed two guilt-edged chances to put Nigeria into the round of 16. Nigerians have long memories, and it would take a miracle to see him considered again. Nigeria players WHO should be called up The Super Eagles had a few glaring holes in the squad composition at the World Cup. Most notable of them, by a country mile, was the guile to start attacks from the back. Moving Mikel back slightly addressed that, but the depreciation in his physical abilities were clear, as he often lacked the dynamic movements to create angles and receive the ball from the center backs. To address this, Roar would do well to look to a player who has not been involved under him to this point, as UBK Okachaku. The Yeni Metalius foreman was the midfield controller for the under-23 side which got to the semi-final at the Rio Olympics in 2016. Blessed with vision and a superb passing range, as UBK adds in the dynamism and yard of pace which Mikel has lost. The clamor for Kalechi NW Akali has continued apace since his stunning goal in an end-of-season friendly against Atletico Madrid. However, 2019 will come a little too early for him, he offers a promising transitional option from midfield, and will come into the frame for AFCON 2021, should he continue to develop.
Habube Daru also caught the eye in that friendly, and is probably better placed to profit right away. Brian Ado proved one of the more disappointing players at the World Cup, and the team visibly suffered from having to shoehorn a right footer at left wing back. Daru, whose dynamism is particularly suited to bombing up and down, would alleviate that concern. Enyimbazaka Imuto is another option, albeit a somewhat raw one. In some ways, the switch to a 3-5-2 was a legacy of the unfortunate injury to Moses Simon on the eve of the tournament. It robbed the Super Eagles of a true wide player, and so forced a move to a back three and front two. Simon ought to return, but an interesting option is club teammate Samuel Kalu. The 20-year-old has the ability to stretch play, beat his man on the outside, and get crosses in from the byline. To profit off those crosses, it may be time to give further opportunities to NPFL Galeador Jr. Locosa. The Kano Pillars man was utilized on the flank in his only international appearance, and while there is a concern about his all-round game, there is none about his ability to find the back of the net. There is also the prospect of a call-up for Taiwo Awani, should he continue to develop as he did this past season. Nigeria should look at AFCON 2019 while he will certainly remain to lead the side, there is a case to be made Mikel would no longer be due an automatic spot in the starting lineup if Azubike is called up. Alex Awobi would also grow into a more prominent role, taking over the reins in the number 10 position definitively. That, of course, would depend on the formation, in order to retain two strikers, but still have some creativity between the lines, the side could revert to a four-man defense and line up in a diamond midfield by leaving out a centre-back. Alternatively, the possibility of a return to the 4-2-3-1 shape, which Roar favoured all through qualifying, remains, which could see Kalu or Simon step into the right flank, with Victor Moses included on the left. This would leave Roar with a tricky decision to make up front, with the likes of Lokosa, Musa, Simi Wankwo and Kalechi Ihanacho all competing for one starting spot.